Sorry about that, guys. We had a little internet connectivity issue there, uh, but we're back online. Uh, yeah, so let me make sure that everything is working as it should, and we'll be all set to go. Beautiful day here in Los Angeles, California. And uh, okay, so in today's video, today's live stream, we're really going to be talking about how to how to start off in filmmaking when it comes down to getting equipment. What is essential equipment? What do you need to be getting? What is important? And how things will function together and how you can start building your business. First things first, don't depend on fancy equipment getting you the shots that you want, okay? I'm still shooting on an old A7S from five years ago. I'm still relying on this camera to get me what I want. And especially now, compared to like five, eight years ago, when back in the day when pro cameras, pro cameras back in the day were so expensive, now they're dirt cheap and they're still good cameras. For example, the 5D Mark II, and uh, you know some other some other main cam 5D Mark II was what I was using. And uh, today's standards, the 5D Mark II is still a great camera. Hey, Jason, what's going on? VFX Todd, what's up? Eric Garcia, how you doing? Sorry about the live stream earlier; it cut off due to internet problems. But I'm so happy to have you guys here today. Um, what I'm even a lot more excited about is for you guys to see tomorrow's video. Uh, this is going to be a controversial video between two pieces of camera gear. So uh, <laughs> we're gonna see how it does. Uh, so hopefully hopefully uh, that's gonna that's gonna do well. But yeah, so back to um, starting off with uh, filmmaking and getting the gear that you want. Set yourself a budget, a decent budget. Don't set it off too high. Like don't set like don't put a three thousand dollar budget down. Set off maybe like, I would say start off with six, seven hundred bucks. Get yourself a Canon T3i and a kit lens. That's all you really need. Use. You don't have to buy brand new. Um, so that's one thing that I learned from my mistake. You know, when I first started off, I went into massive debt. I had almost twenty thousand dollars in debt uh, in the beginning. Uh, <laughs> I've I've never admitted that to anybody, but yeah, I was twenty thousand dollars in debt. And you'd never want to be in debt when you have your own business. You never want to be in debt. Uh, your credit's going to go go down, and it's just it's not worth it. So when you're starting off your filmmaking business, dip your toe in the water first. And by that, I mean buy cheap gear. 600 700 bucks. that's all you should be spending on a camera, and work your way up from there. Start doing a lot of free gigs here and there. Pick up a little bit of momentum when it comes down to your reel and to your resume, and then you will be able to approach clients um, uh, with with an actual um, with an actual price. If that makes sense, I think it does. Um, Rona, hi, uh, Rona from Germany. I have a Canon 100D, no film experience. What add-ons like the Juin gimbal, tripod, etc. Can I add? So a gimbal is a great way to um, a, a gimbal is a great thing to start with. Uh, however, before you do get a gimbal, get a tripod first. Uh, that's definitely a must. A tripod is more important than any other camera accessory, in my opinion. Uh, is tripods do a lot more than what they were meant to do. You can be using them as a monopod. You can be using them as a crane, a jib. There's a lot of things you can be doing with the tripod. It's not just meant to hold your camera. So definitely before you get anything else, get a tripod. That is extremely important. After you get a tripod, then you can start dipping your toe into other types of equipment like gimbals, sliders, jibs, cranes, all that sorts of stuff, drones. Um, drones are definitely overrated, so definitely don't invest in a drone right away. Okay, Wait until you have some good footage on the ground before you move up to the sky. All right, <laughs> so that's my advice when it comes to that. Um, Israel says, good evening, boss. Good evening, good sir. Uh, VFX says, I have a tons of gear and three cameras. Honestly, dude, I have two cameras, and uh, if you're not a YouTuber, you only need one camera, in my opinion. Uh, if you're doing a gig which requires two cameras, hire another camera person. It's better to have your focus completely dedicated to one camera rather than two, because a lot of stuff, a lot of things can go wrong. 
Uh, so yeah, whenever you need a dual camera setup for a client, always strongly recommend, of course, if budget allows for it, I strongly recommend hiring a second person and uh, working your way from there. Uh, because if your attention is directed to multiple, multiple areas, you're really going to be lacking in one very important area. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, da, 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 da. Hey, Momentus Prime. What up, what up, what up, Momentus? <laughs> uh, Israel says, I finally ordered the Jew and Crane version too. I followed your link from your previous post. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate that. So yes, all the links on my channel in my description box, they are affiliate links. So they do help me out. They help support this channel. Um, obviously the prices won't go up if you click on those links, they don't, they're the same exact price as if they were, as if, you know, non-affiliate links were. So yeah, if you guys are interested in buying any of that equipment, um, I keep a full list of gear in each of my YouTube videos. So check them out whenever you're watching uh, my YouTube video and see if anything, um, if anything catches your eye. Um, VFX Todd says, Momentous pr Momentum Productions, I received an... Ooh, you received an inheritance and bought tons of gear and cameras. Ooh, what did you buy? Tell me. Rona, by the way, I have been encouraged by your videos to start. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. That makes me, you know, work even harder. So I really appreciate that. Uh, Is Ramona, hi, yeah, I have the Zoo and Crane too. Awesome. Jordan Wright says, have you tried Contact's Zeiss lenses? I haven't. I will be dipping my toe into more Zeiss lenses, definitely. Um, I'm, I'm dropping off. I, I already sold off all of my Canon lenses, finally. It took me a year and a half to sell my Canon lenses. Uh, I'm finally, you know, this is the only non-native lens I have. Um, this is a Rokinon 14 mil. Uh, the rest of my lenses, I have an 85 1.8 Sony. I have a G Master 70 to 200 2.8. I have a 24 to 70 Zeiss F4, and I have a 16 to 35 Zeiss F4. So I don't have too many lenses. So um, I'm going to be constantly uh, spending more money on glass because overall, that's much more important than camera bodies. Lenses have their own sort of, let's say, resolution. Lenses can be very, very sharp or they're very, very dull. Light hits the glass before it hits the sensor. So think of your lens as like a little filter. Whatever goes through the lens is what is gonna hit your sensor. So it's always important to have a better lens than necessarily your camera body because whatever the lens is picking up, that's what your sensor is gonna be picking up. Your sensor can't for the most part, your sensor can't compensate for what the lens is doing. So if the lens is producing very dull images. The sensor can't really do much because it's receiving dull, uh, dull data or dull light for that matter. So keep that in mind. Um, phew, on drones. Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't, guys. Drones, when, when DJI first released the Phantom 3, that's when drones like skyrocketed. Uh, the Phantom 3 is what what made drones go crazy. And then after that, the Mavic Pro. But now with all the laws and the dangers of flying drones, it's really died down. Uh, so keep that in mind. Drones, think of that as think of that as a toy for right now. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, I, I don't think drones are something, I don't think there's something that you should be investing a lot of your money in. Definitely not. Um, yeah, that's my opinion on that. Yeah, so far my film gear is a Panasonic G85, Viltrox VX18M Treadpod, Rode Video Micro, not much else beyond that, still saving up for other stuff like a slider cage, gimbal monitor, and lights. Good, so that's, that's a very good start. Uh, I do think lighting is one of the most important things that you need to be saving up money for. Uh, I mean, as soon as you get your tripod, lighting is key. And then after lighting, obviously on par with lighting, sound as well. So with the lights, you should be also investing in, in audio gear. Once you have the basics of video down, which is your camera, lens, tripod, lighting, and sound, then you can start going into other accessories like gimbals, drones, sliders, and all that other stuff. Because all those other things are more like a luxury. 
Um, they they allow you to create videos at a faster pace. They do they make your job they make your life a little bit easier. But the fundamentals of filmmaking, you know, lighting, lens, camera, tripod, those are like and sound obviously. Those are like that's the heart of video. So that's what I would be saving your money for before entering any other sorts of camera accessories. Um, gimbals are fantastic as well. I do feel like that after you you get your lens and you get your audio equipment, the gimbal should be the next thing on your list because gimbals can do a lot. They don't only stabilize your footage, but they do so much more than that, and they can do a lot. Uh, so yeah, gimbals definitely are up there right after sound and lighting. Um, Zoo and gimbals are great. Yeah, so tomorrow, guys. Ooh, tomorrow. Should I, should I tell you what I'm releasing tomorrow? I'm comparing two gimbals tomorrow, the Juin Crane Plus and the Feiyutech A2000. Uh, a lot of people have been commenting on my videos telling me I'm biased, I'm biased, I'm biased. I'm not biased. I go with the gimbal that performs better. So tomorrow I'm going to be giving you a detailed video. Detailed. Neither company, neither Juin Tech or Feiyutech has sponsored me to make this video. I'm doing this out of my own free will. And yes, I do have good relations with both companies, but this is done out of just my will, okay? Neither company has encouraged me to make this video. This is all done by me and by user experience. So I'm gonna be sharing you, sharing with you all of that to, in tomorrow's video. So make sure you watch it. It's detailed and it's objective evidence. It's, it's very little of it is subjective. The only parts where I talk about being subjective or where I am subjective is um, ergonomically a little bit. It's just because my hands are shaped different than, than yours or other people's. So ergonomics, it's going to be a little bit different in my opinion, but I do back it up with evidence. I do show you why ergonomically things are a little bit better. Um, but you'll, you'll see, you'll see. It's kind of difficult to explain all of it right now, but you'll see in tomorrow's video uh, what objective evidence really is like okay so uh yeah i'm not trying to be biased here i'm trying to get you guys the most accurate equipment the best equipment for your money because filmmaking equipment is not cheap um okay let's answer some questions here um maybe i missed it but what software do you recommend for editing final cut pro if you have a mac if you don't have a mac it's going to be adobe premiere pro or sony vegas pro uh the standard in today's work life would be sony uh would be uh, adobe premiere and final cut pro but more likely it's going to be adobe premiere a lot of people are switching over to premiere i'm sticking with final cut simply because i feel like it's much more user friendly and it's a lot faster I have a Sony a6500. Which, uh, which picture profile do you recommend to take video outdoor? So on my a7S, I don't have an a6500. I don't know what it's like on the a6500, but on my a7S, I shoot an S-log, and that is picture profile 7. Uh, so that's what I shoot. Obviously, it goes up to, what, 3200 ISO, so you have to put in some ND filters to help you stop down light. Uh, but at the end of the day, it does help you out with color grading and color correction. And I've used it on a lot of my videos. Unfortunately, with my Sony A9, I don't have picture profiles. So what I did, I manually made the colors a little bit flatter than normal. And that should help me out a little bit with uh, with coloring in post. Uh, but yeah, S-Log S -Log 2, that's what it is. S-Log 2 for the Sony A7S. And that is picture profile 7. Uh, VFX Todd says, I have four aperture lights. Awesome. Uh, two light stands, boom pole, sumo monitor, ninja inferno monitor, Juin Crane Sennheiser MXE 600. Very nice, Mike. And lots of spare batteries for everything. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. How do you like the aperture lights? Uh, let me know. Uh, VFX Todd, I'm looking at maybe getting a DJI Ronin S or the Tilta G2X. But a while before I make that purchase, need to get some basic lights first. Awesome. Virgil, you're going with DJI? Oh. I have, I had the DJI Osmo, and I didn't like it. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, the Ronin-S or the Tilta G2X, okay. All right. 
Uh, VFX Todd. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at Ronin 2. It's good because it doesn't need motors for stabilizing. Whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. The Ronin does need motors to stabilize. The Ronin is powered by, by brushless motors. All gimbals are, unless you're talking about glide cams. Um, I also have a Panasonic GH5 and a GH5S and a Sony A5000 for vlogging and some other doodads. Nice. That's a lot. That's a lot of gear, man. Um, is there any improvement on the new version of the servo follow focus system functionality wise when compared to the old version? So last week I just got the old version of the follow focus system. So I have both right now in my possession. Um, I haven't opened up the older version yet, but I will be making a comprehensive video on those two follow focus units. Uh, so far to my knowledge, the older version is more compatible with different lenses than the newer version. So the biggest difference between the two is that one looks aesthetically better and the other one works with a wider variety of lenses. So it depends on your preference. Do you wanna look good or do you wanna have gear that's more versatile? So I hope that answered your question. But I need to test it out for myself. I was only told that. So I need to compare them side by side first. Uh, completely agreed Completely agreed about saving up more, uh, up more for uh, audio equipment. It's why I got the Rode Video Micro and the G5. Just need to think about the audio equipment I can use solely easily. Lav mics, maybe? Yeah, look at some. Uh, the Rode Filmmaker Lavalier Kit. That's the kit I have. I have also the Komika kit, but Rode is pristine. If you want to go even higher up in quality and spend like six, seven hundred bucks, go with the Sennheiser G3s. I have those too, but one of them broke. <laughs> the cable stripped. Um, so yeah, I can't use the G3 anymore. But yeah, um, if you take care of those mics, it should do you good. Um, Jason says, I have a Crane Plus, so looking forward to watching it tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, this is good. Uh, with Feutech, they just released a firmware update that bumped the A2000 from a four pound payload to a five and a half pound payload. So I thought it was, I thought it was a good idea to compare the Crane Plus and the A A2000 at that point. Otherwise, it would there wouldn't have been a comparison. The Crane Plus would have won hands down because of the payload. Uh, but now it's a lot closer in comparison, and uh, a lot of people are deciding whether they should get the A2000 or the Crane Plus, so that's what's gonna be uh, out on my channel tomorrow morning, so stay tuned for that. Yes, take a look at Aperture Lights, they're priced well and excellent quality. Also, I would recommend ordering from Amazon as they deliver faster, very true. Um, VFX Todd says, I'm a DaVinci Resolve user, editing and color, and now with Fusion added, it's insane. I need to try that. Um, okay. Yeah, wow, VFX has a lot of a lot of good advice here. Um, love the aperture lights. Yes, I have the 120D, the uh, Lightstorm 1.5W, the Mini 20D, the M9, um, and then I have, yeah, I have four aperture lights. Four aperture lights, right? And then I also have their their uh, VS5X uh, monitor, their seven inch monitor, which is a great, great, uh, great monitor too. I did reviews on all of those things, so if you want to check them out, let me know. Um, I got the Ronin mixed up with another brand. <laughs> yeah, uh, Virgil Hart says I don't know. I really dig the Ronin S Sport mode. Those stabilized whip pans look sick, but I'm gonna wait for the reviews to be sure. I hear the DJI and Tilta can get heavy. Yes, they do. I, I saw I saw them both at NAB, and Kitty from Atola Visuals, when I was in San Fran, she let me play around with the Tilta, and it is heavy. It's a very heavy gimbal. Um, but you know me. I go for the Crane, too. I think that's probably the best gimbal right now on the market, simply because of what it can do, its functionality, and its price, and, and its weight. It's lighter than all of those gimbals. Uh, yeah, I mean... Obviously, I'm going to go with the crane too. That's just my jam. Um, it's overall, if you look at it from the you know short term to long term, long term, it's going to save you a ton of money. Uh, DJI is slightly overpriced. It weighs more, and its functionality is a little bit limited compared to the crane too. 
But again, we have to wait until it is released. But I saw it at NAB and at CES. I played around with it, and I wasn't impressed, unfortunately. Uh, so, yeah, we'll just wait for that to be released. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, awesome. So do you guys have any more questions for me? We're going to do a half-hour live stream just so I uh, – I want to start. I'm going to start doing these live streams weekly, every Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Los Angeles time. Uh, so yeah, let me know. Um, but yeah, that's that's what it is. And then uh, gradually, based on viewership, we 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 can uh, each week we can start going up in time for these live streams. We can go from 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half depends on viewership. Yeah. Uh, VFX Todd says, what other gear do you plan on reviewing for your channel? Uh, okay, so I have a ton of Juintech accessories that I got to review. Uh, shoulder mount. Um, I have the new follow focus system I got to review. I have a new action camera that I'm going to review. I have, <laughs> I have something crazy cool right here to the side. It has nothing to do with cameras. It is called a solo wheel. It's actually an electric unicycle. And what I want to do, I want to I'm still learning how to how to ride it. It's very difficult. Like I've fallen off at least 50 times. I scraped it up pretty bad, but it still works really well. Uh, I'm trying to combine a way to use technology like beyond what it's meant to do. So I want to use the solo wheel and a gimbal to get extreme gliding shots. So if you want to check it out, um, the solo wheel from InMotion, that's what I have. It's actually right here. I can pull it out if you guys want to see. It's pretty big. Uh, it's basically a bicycle tire that's electrically powered. And it's kind of like a Segway. Depending on which way you lean, that's the direction it's going to go in. But uh, So it's self-balancing forward and back, but not left to right. So I keep falling over either to my right or to my left. It's so hard to ride. But uh, I think it's just like riding a bike. Uh, if I do it at least, if I practice half an hour every day for the next two weeks, I think I'll get it. And then I'll be able to use a gimbal on it. Um, what is your favorite lens for gimbal work for the Sony FE? I already covered that in a video, but my favorite lens so far is a 16 to 35 Zeiss F4. That's my favorite lens. Um, have you used the Aperture F7 or M9 lights? I'm thinking about using the F7 as my first key light. So the F7 I don't have, the M9 I do have. The M9, very powerful light. It's perfect. Um, so it has nine LED beads, and it's good for lighting up, for example, if you're filming a night scene in a car, you can easily place that M9 in the, in the instrument cluster area, and it'll light up a person's face to make it seem like it's natural light coming from the car. So it's, it's a nice little light that can be used in so many different areas. Uh, you can really manipulate that light in any way you want. It's probably the most versatile light that uh, Aperture has made, the M9. And if it was just a little bit thinner, you could fit it in your wallet. It's so thin. Um, so yeah, that's probably, and honestly, if you have it close enough to your subject, you can even use it as an edge light. I haven't tried it, but it looks like it has that power to light up uh, a little bit of the edges of your of your face and, and your hair uh, to give that third dimension look to it. So I, I do feel like the M9 is powerful enough to be an edge light if you have it close enough. Um, yeah, awesome. By the way, a lot of people have been asking me, what is the cage that I have on my A7S? This is actually a cage made by Tilta. They have a sub-brand called Warax, and so this is the Warax cage for A7S and for the A7S II or any A7 II or A7 I camera. So yeah, that's what I'm using. That's this cage. And uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be saying goodbye to my A7S Mark I very, very soon. As soon as the A7S Mark III is announced, I'll make my final decision on whether or not I need to get the S3 or the A7 III. Uh, that's the next big investment I'm going to have. Uh, it's going to be quite of a difference in price. We're going to be looking at $3,200, $3,300 for the S3 and then under two grand for the A7 III. So the A7S III better have 4K60, otherwise that's going to just kill it. 
They're also rumored to have a new color science for the uh, A7S III that's similar to the FS5 Mark II. That's a cinema grade camera, FS5 Mark II. So if they're putting that same color science in the A7S III, man, I'm kind of debating on whether or not the 4K60 is a deal breaker or not because of that new color science. But yeah, I have to look at the test footage, obviously, on YouTube and Vimeo uh, in order for me to make my purchasing decision. Um, but yeah, 4K60 would be nice. Man, it sucks that I'm saying this, but I don't think it's going to happen, 4K60. The color science, the image stabilization, the touchscreen autofocus, the autofocus itself, those are the things that are going to be the that are going to be a lot better. But when it comes down to 4K60, I really don't see it happening. Uh, I just I don't feel it. I'm looking at Sony's history with the way they were releasing cameras and features. It doesn't look like it's going to happen for the A7S Mark III. Um, what do you recommend as a lighting setup for interviews? So what I do, what I love to use, um, only two lights. And uh, we did a video, I did a video with uh, Atola Visuals, Kitty from Atola Visuals, and she actually did a whole tutorial on lighting for interviews. And what we were talking about, we were using the, the Lightstorm 120D from Aperture and a softbox uh, from them, the Light Dome. And we were also using a Lightstorm 1.5W as an edge light. And you know how things work, right? The key light should be opposite the backlight or the edge lights. So only two lights. One to uh, give off that that edge light uh, for um, uh, what's it called? Oh man, for depth. Let's just say for depth, three D depth. So that way you can see that the person is in front of the background. It gives you that extra depth by lighting up the edges of the face. And then we have the key light. I actually have a key light right now. It's a LED panel. That's it's too harsh on me right now, but it's okay. Uh, and the key light with the soft box is gonna be a nice soft touch on the uh, person's face. And it's gonna create a nice division line between brighter and darker, and it's gonna create a nice contrast between two sides of the face. The edge light, obviously, or some of you probably don't know, it should be on the opposite side of the edge light. So keep that in mind if you want that nice Rembrandt lighting, that triangle, illuminated triangle on the opposite side of the face. Uh, that's what you that's what you want. You want to have a key light on one side opposite that the um, the edge light or, or backlight Greetings from Croatia. What up? What up? Have you ever tried using vintage lenses? Ooh, have you ever tried using vintage lenses for filmmaking? I want to so bad uh, these Russian lenses the Helios I believe I want to try those those are Soviet Union lenses, guys. That's where I'm from. That's where my family's from, Soviet, former Soviet Union. I got to try some Russian lenses, guys. I was born here, but my, my parents are Russian. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> got to try that out. Josh, what do you think about – oh, sorry, I missed a question. Uh, I wish Sony would have 10-bit shooting as a filmmaker. It's important for posting color. Yeah, 10-bit, man. They got to they gotta go after the GH5. They really got to – make it tough for people to buy the GH5. 10-bit color with 422 color sampling. Damn, yes, we want it, Sony, give it. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Josh, what do you think about the recently announced Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K? It's insane for the price, right? Yeah, it is. I, I, I need to play with it, man. <laughs> I really need to play with it. Uh, the only I only played around when I was taking some film courses in Santa Monica College. Um, they gave us a Blackmagic camera, their first generation camera. I hated it. I despised it. Battery life and ergonomics was just dead awful, and the picture wasn't too great. So ever since I had, ever since I played around with that camera, I was like, I'm never gonna touch Blackmagic again. But after reading about that new Blackmagic camera, um, the pocket camera. Yes, I, I do want to play around with it. Uh, I don't have any personal opinions about it yet, but so far it does look great for what's written on the paper, the spec sheet. And uh, yeah, definitely that's the type of camera, though, that you should try out before you buy. Uh, because Blackmagic is still a very new company, and um, that's definitely something you got to test drive before you buy. I, I don't think, I you know... 
I don't think that you should buy it just based on what you see on YouTube. You need to go and actually play around with it because as I stated earlier, guys, black magic has a really big issue with ergonomics. So go to any store that would sell that camera and play around with it before you make that purchase. Uh, that's definitely something that you gotta, you gotta do. Um, do, 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 do. VFX Todd says, I might sell my GH5S to get it. Ooh, wow. Oh, man. You ready to give up autofocus? You're going to have to give up autofocus, bro. And uh, honestly, some ergonomics you're going to have to give up too, I feel like. Uh, but again, I haven't played with the Blackmagic camera yet, so don't, you know, don't take my, don't take my word for it. But I, I, from the pictures and from what I've seen, uh, ergonomics, it does still, still feel like it has some issues with that. Um, Virgil Hart says, yes, the Helios 44258 F2 is a heck of a lens. I hear the Jupiter 9 85 mil is a fantastic. I, I don't even know that lens. I got to check it out. But yeah, I need to check out Helios. That's the, because of what I've seen, the images, the bokeh on that, the swirls and the bokeh, it's it makes it look like a Van Gogh painting because of the, the texture of the bokeh and the swirling. I, I, it's really cool. And they're cheap lenses too. So I want to check it out. Um, yeah. Yeah, guys, good live stream. Let me just, uh, okay. Well, I still have my GH5. Yeah, man, I wouldn't sell the GH5 until you play around with the Black Magic. I wouldn't do it, man. I feel like Black Magic is still such a new company. I wouldn't really put all of my all of my eggs in that basket, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, Jason, uh, how do you think about the Pilot Fly gimbal? You know, last year I reached out to them. They didn't want to send me a gimbal. Uh, it's way too overpriced. Way too overpriced. They want like 1,100 euros, I believe it was. Euros or pounds. And I'm like, no. You're, you're trying to sell a $700 or $800 gimbal maximum for three or $400 more. No, the price just does, doesn't justify it. Uh, yeah, there's Helios lenses and a bunch of other Soviet vintage lenses like the Jupiter lineup, bunch of opinions, oh, options uh, out there. Yeah, I need to look at that. Uh, I definitely want to get a few. Vintage lenses, I think, are definitely one of the non-native lenses that we, we need to be playing around with because it just, it, it does give you a lot of cool vibes within your footage. I have both the GH5 and GH5S, so I'd only pick up the GH5S if I decide the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Yeah. Uh, by the way, how's the low light on the GH5S? I haven't played around with it. So since you have both the GH5 and the GH5S, is there much of a difference between the two? Uh, let me know, man. I, I really want to know your opinion on that. I want to see how low light the GH5S really is. I don't really trust the footage from YouTube because YouTube compresses a lot of it. I haven't checked out Vimeo footage yet, so maybe I got to do that. But, uh, but a from a person who has both the GH5 and GH5S, I really want to see or know what the difference is like in, in low light. Uh, the GH5S low light is very clean compared to the GH5. Awesome. So what's the max ISO you would probably recommend going on the GH5S? On the A7S, I went up to 40,000 ISO with clean, clean picture. Over 40,000, you're going to start seeing significant noise, but I went up to 40,000. So what's the GH5S like? I also hear that the vintage Canon FD lenses are awesome and cost affordable options too. I do. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've i looked at the. I actually almost bought an FD Canon lens when I had my 5D Mark II. Uh, this was when I was like kind of a noob with lenses and filmmaking in general. Um, I, I almost bought FD lenses. Um, and that would have been a mistake because I wanted like autofocus and this and that. I didn't want to buy any... Um, uh, adapters, anything like that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> now that I know that FD lenses are vintage and old, and Canon doesn't—I don't think Canon makes them anymore. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to try it out. 
Yeah. Any more questions, guys? This is a very good live stream. I like it. By the way, let me know. I need to take a sample of how many people like this time frame for live streams. Is Sundays at 7 p.m. a good time for all of you? Let me know. Um, this is just a random day and time I thought that would be good for everybody. So if it's Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, if this is a good time for you, let me know. Um, I actually feel like the FD lenses would match better for Sony mirrorless cameras like the Canon DSLRs than the Canon DSLRs. Yeah, I, I don't know. I have to try it out, but yeah. Um, I would recommend no higher than 6400, even though I have a neat video plugin for noise. I would rather avoid noise if possible. I believe in lights when low light shooting. Yeah. Honestly, you shouldn't be shooting above 6400. I was going overkill with 40,000. I mean, unless you're shooting time lapses and stuff like that, high ISOs, 6400 should be the max, honestly. Um, otherwise, you know, if you're shooting over 6400 ISO, you're shooting in some poorly lit location. Um, but hey, if you're traveling, it's good to have that extendable range ISO. But if you're trying to produce like a short film, you do need to have some lights handy. 6400 ISO, anything above that. 6400 on its own is already pretty high. Um, I remember that for my 5D Mark II. It would, I would, I would try not to shoot above 800 ISO because above 800 is when you start seeing some noisy footage. Uh, but yeah, uh, 6400. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. That's pretty good. This time frame is good for live stream for me. Awesome VFX. Thanks, bro. Um, Pero Bravo says, hello, bro. I bought the Sony a6500, the basic lens. I'm looking for a better lens to use than the Juin Crane 2. Any advice to go with the Sony uh, or Sigma lens? Thanks. Best regards from Iraq. All right. So here's the thing. I tested out the new Sony, uh, the new Sigma autofocus lenses at NAB. They were slow. They were unfortunately slow, quicker than the previous gen and all the other non-native glass I've used without an adapter. Um, I, If you have a Sony body, dude, go with native glass, especially in the beginning. Just invest in native glass. You're going to get so much better performance out of native glass than you are with non-native glass. Uh, when you have a good variety of lenses, like five, six native lenses, then venture off into other uh, non-native lenses. Um, you know, the more lenses you have, guys, the different style of footage you're going to get. You can play around with a lot of different things. Uh, as I said earlier, lenses are more important than cameras. They really are. Um, and they're a better investment. They're not going to really go down in price like camera bodies do. Lenses, pretty, you know, if lenses are kept in good condition, they're going to stay in that same value. Camera bodies, because it's really based on the circuitry inside, they're going to go down in value very quickly. Um, lenses, it's just based on glass. You know, glass is glass. Uh, you can't do much more with it. Um, but with, when it comes down to circuitry, processor, sensors, and, and all that other stuff, that stuff improves every year, every second, honestly. So lenses are definitely uh, a less of a depreciating asset to your business. Um, yeah, so stick with native in the beginning and then venture off after you have a good variety of lenses for, uh, native. Uh, okay. Yeah. This time from time frame works well for me. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Sunday is good. Awesome. Now Japan, it's 1130 AM on Monday. Unfortunately, I don't, oh, fortunately you don't have work today so I can catch up on your live streaming. Awesome. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't meet everyone's time frame, but uh, I, I thought that 7 p.m. on Sundays would be good. I believe in using lights to fake natural lighting. I don't believe in leaning on low light power for shooting in dark scenes. Lights are your friend. Yes, lights are your friend. You can never have enough. Here are two things you can never have enough of. Lights and lenses. Those are the two things you can never have enough of. You can... Continue investing in lights. You can continue investing in glass because there's an infinite amount. And honestly, your goal should be to light up the world. Get as many lights as you can, um, but different lights. Don't invest in the same lights. Uh, try to work with different types of lighting. Uh, this will just make your mind work differently. Um, I only have one Aperture 120D. 
I have um, I have many different. I have ten lights that are different. I have three Fresnels that are the same. Another Fresnel that's different. Two light panels are the same, and then I have two light panels that are different. Like I have a complete different collection of of lights that are meant for different purposes. You know what one light can do, the other light can't. Um, so yeah. Um, hey Josh, anything came out out of that uh, referral? Oh, hey, what's up, dude? What's up, man? <laughs> I still I haven't answered any of my emails in like the last week and a half, so I have to <laughs> I have to get back to you guys. I've been shooting it like crazy, but no, not yet, man. I appreciate the referral. Thank you. Um, Sunday is good too. Awesome. 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 Agreed lights and glass. Definitely. Those are the number two things. And then for the hell of it, throw in sound as well. Uh, sound is important, but I feel like if you have one or two decent mics, you can get away with a lot. So yeah, mainly focus on, on lighting and lenses. I think those are the two crucial, two of the biggest crucial things you can have, uh, for video. It's lighting and glass. Yeah, it's hard for me to admit it because I love investing in new camera bodies because of the r ridiculous features that I don't need, but that's just me. That's my mentality. So if you don't have that mentality, stay away from it. Uh, it'll burn less of a hole in your pocket, trust me. <laughs> um, ooh, Virgil's talking about an RGB light from Yangua. Ooh, Yangua, I think that's how you pronounce it. RGB lights. Man, I want one. Aperture... Uh, they didn't release the light, but they kind of announced it. They have their own RGB light coming too. Um, but yeah, I do want to try out RGB lights. I'm curious to see what happens to the, uh, light output. Um, yeah, I really want to see what happens to the light output, but yeah, RGB lights, very interesting new form of technology. And I definitely want to try it out. Uh, I enjoy watching your live streams, valuable discussions with the filmmaker community. Keep it up. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. This, uh, this means the world to me. Yeah. So guys, for those of you who are just tuning in tomorrow, I'm releasing a video comparing two different types of film equipment, two different gimbals to be exact. The Fayutech A2000 and the Crane Plus. Literally every day I'm getting messages on Facebook and messages through YouTube asking me to compare those two gimbals because those are the biggest competitors right now in the market. Bayutech and Juintech. Those are like, boom, like, oh, they're in the ring together, guys. They really are. So I'm releasing a detailed, unbiased review. Unbiased, non-sponsored. Neither company has paid me to make this video. So this will be as unbiased as I possibly can make it. I have objective evidence stating which gimbal is better. So you guys will see exactly what's going on. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Virgil Hart says, yeah, Jung Wow sells these cool uh, YN360 ice wands. Ooh, I've heard of ice wands. That's pretty dope. And they're RGB. Wow. That's sick. I need to check them out. I hear they're not very bright, but they're useful and work very well, apparently. Okay. Yeah, I would think that RGB is going to not produce the same output as a dedicated color temperature uh, light. Uh, VFX, talk, but I could be wrong. I don't know anything about RGB technology. I've never had an RGB light before. Yes, yeah, so you're a great source of information. I bought my June Crane based on your experience. I'll be using it more to shoot. I'll be using it to shoot behind the scenes for an upcoming IMAX movie. Wow. You definitely do. Listen, on the set of that IMAX movie, take a selfie and uh, post it and tag June Tech, and they're, they're going to post on their Instagram. That's insane, dude. Congratulations. IMAX, that's a big gig. Hell yeah. IMAX, oh, I love IMAX. Not a fan of 3D, but I am a huge fan of IMAX. Straight up. Virtual Heart says, plus the YN360 are like 80 bucks. Wow, that's cheap. And the YN600 is a little over 100 bucks. That's so cheap. Wow. 
The Hawaii, the Hawaii Entrepreneur Podcast says, hey, bro, I was wondering if you ever revised your filmmaking contract. Yes, I did make multiple revisions to it. Each year I make revisions to my contract um, because of inflation and rules change. So, yes, I do need to make a new video of an updated contract. But for the basics, I feel like for basics, those two videos that I have on filmmaking contracts, they're still good. Um, there are a few different uh, – new things that I need to implement in those videos. So yeah, look for a new video in the future talking about filmmaking contracts. Uh, I definitely implemented a few different uh, new things that uh, are, are crucial. PK says, what camera for photography would you get to complement the GH5? For photography, ooh, complement the GH5. Depends on budget, man. Depends on budget. You know, I want to try Fujifilm. I really want to try Fujifilm for photography. Uh, man, Fujifilm. I'm scared to try Fujifilm because if I like it too much, I'm going to like switch over. And I already switched over from Canon and that broke my heart because I was a loyal Canon fan for a couple of years. And I went over to Sony because of video features. And now Fujifilm is coming into play again. Like. Damn. I'm scared to try Fujifilm, guys. Kitty from Atola Visuals handed me her Fujifilm. I think it was the XT, XT, XTS. I think that's what it's called. I don't know anything about Fujifilm, but I played around with it, and it was really cool. So, uh, yeah. Uh, look at Fujifilm. Look at Fujifilm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, try to get, guys, honestly, try to get as many different pieces of equipment as you can get your hands on. Try try not to stay with the same camera equipment. Um, I mean, obviously, you got to get your basic, your foundation camera equipment, which is, yeah, your Sony with your – or Canon, whatever camera you're using with native glass. That has to be like your workhorse. But outside of that, try to get different sorts of camera equipment. Try to be wide. Don't try to be narrow. Be wide. You want to experience filmmaking and photography as much as you can. You got to absorb as much as you can. So if your budget allows you to do it, if time allows you to do it, play around with different equipment. Don't just stick to Sony or Panasonic. Use that as your foundation, as your workhorse. But when you're trying to venture out into different things, use different equipment. That's why I'm trying not to buy the same gear uh, over and over again. Um, I'm trying to buy different lights, different lenses, different camera bodies. Yeah. Um, VFX says, Fujifilm cameras are a lot like their film stock. They have a slight blue cast. Oh, I love that blue cast, man. I also want to get into anamorphic lenses. I love those beams, those horizontal beams, the oval-shaped bokeh. I love that distortion. I just, oh, God. So there's a lot of stuff, guys, that I got to get into. There's a lot of stuff I don't have, a lot of stuff. Clearly, I have a lot more. <laughs> Clearly, I have a lot of stuff I have to look into, a lot more than what I have. So, yeah, man, there's just an endless amount of filmmaking gear and lenses like – Ah, oh, dude, I just got to open up my own warehouse and just put a whole bunch of stuff in there because I'm running out of room. <laughs> oh, man. Um, the Hawaii Entrepreneur Podcast is saying, and when do you think a new videographer could start charging for video? I feel like I'm getting taken advantage of. They keep bringing up. I'll advertise you. They don't take into account equipment mileage. All right, so... Hawaii Entrepreneurial Podcast is asking a very good question. They're feeling like they're getting taken advantage of. Uh, when do you think a videographer should start charging? After you're doing a few pro bono gigs, that's fine. Build up your, your resume. How good is your footage? Have you asked around? Like, Have you asked people's opinions about your footage? How good is it? That's the number one question you should be asking yourself. Number two... Let's say your friends think your footage is outstanding. Number two, you got to put a value on yourself and be like, you know what? No, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to get taken advantage of. Here's my, here's what I charge. You got to say no. I learned that too after dealing with a ton of uh, Instagram influencers, uh, 
man, I'll give you a few names. Um, so my relationship with, uh, I had a relationship, business relationship, uh, with Paige Hathaway. She's a fitness model. And I had a business, I have a business relationship with Rob Riches. What happened with those clients is that I started doing pro bono gigs with them. Okay. They saw the footage. They loved it. They didn't even wait for me to say, Hey, I'm going to charge you now. They right away said, okay, you know what? We want to hire you. Okay. I didn't even have to say anything, but if you're with someone who's trying to take advantage of you, who doesn't even offer to pay you for your next shoot, you got to lay down the foot and say, Hey, no, not going to happen. Okay. Not going to happen. Stop. Uh, this is what I, this is what I charge. This is when you're going to start building uh, a wall a good positive wall, a good foundation, and putting a value on your business and your hard work. Don't, huh, believe it or not, saying no is better than saying yes in this case. Because when you say no, they're gonna be like, damn, did he just reject me? Wow, he must be worth something. So I'm gonna hire him. That's the mentality. So if you do enough free gigs with the same client over and over again, eventually they're gonna be like, you know what? Either they're going to have two different reactions. One, they're going to be sympathetic and be like, you know what? I need to start paying this guy. Or two, they're going to say, I can really squeeze some juice out of this guy. He's doing a lot of work for free. I'm not going to pay him. So if they do that second response where they want to take advantage of you, you got to be like, you know what? I know you're a big Instagram influencer or whatever, but this is just not working out for me. I need to get paid. All right. My equipment costs money. My time costs money. I got to put food on the table. Put your foot down. Um, yeah. So I hope that answered your question. VFX Todd says, I would love to try uh, Canon and Sony if they would just offer 10 bit shooting features. Yeah. Wait for the A7S3. We'll see what happens. I, man. 10 bit. I just don't know. Sony is one of those wild cards. <laughs> you might consider, okay, VFX is replying to Eric Garcia. Eric Garcia is saying, my budget doesn't allow me to have an Aperture 120D, ha, ha, ha. What cheaper lights would you recommend for wedding, th wedding films? Um, as VFX, uh, VFX Todd said, Aperture F7 is a great light, but also let me know what your budget is. Uh, what is the maximum amount of money you can spend on a light? The Why Entrepreneur podcast said, I just did a gig for a fitness company called Orange Theory Fitness, and they loved my video. Orange Theory is massive. They're very big. Orange Theory is all over the place. They loved your video. Boom. Pull out the contract. Make them pay you a 50% deposit, no less. No 30% deposit, no 25% deposit. None of that BS. 50% deposit. 50% half now, half later when the job is done. I learned that the hard way too. I used to put, <laughs> when I first started out, when I was just, you know, just, you know, just, just trying out different things, I put a 10% deposit on my contract, which is so small. 10% is nothing. And my brother already had an established business and he was looking over my contract. And he was like, 10%? You kidding me? Put down 50%. So my brother actually helped me. He inspired me in a lot of ways to uh, help build my business. Uh, when it comes down to that business sense, uh, don't be taken advantage of. Fifty percent deposit. Boom. Done. Uh, da, 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 da. Thanks, bro. Got to start putting my foot down and and start putting some value in my work. People clearly want videos from me. If it sucked, they wouldn't have asked me to do video. That's right. And Orange Theory is big. For those of you who don't know what Orange Theory is, they're they're a pretty big fitness studio. They have a bunch of different locations. I have one literally one mile down from my from where I live. So yeah. Uh, VFX Todd says, use your video for Orange as a demo to get more clients. Yes, and put your put your work online, man. Put it on Vimeo. Put it on YouTube. Start sharing it with your Facebook friends. You know, get the word out. Social media is an extremely powerful tool, so use it. All right. All right, everybody, I'm I'm done. I'm going to go grab some food. <laughs> I'm exhausted. We went 
23 minutes over, which is great. I'm so happy that you guys are answering all these, uh, asking all these questions. So uh, if you like this, please let me know. Give it a like, share it, subscribe if you haven't already. I want to see more of what you guys are doing. Feel free to email me. If I don't reply, email me again until I do reply, okay? Pester me. Pester me. Don't be scared. I don't bite. Keep emailing me if I don't reply. Just keep it up because I do sometimes get overwhelmed with a ton of emails. Keep emailing me. If, you have, if you're fed up with me, reach me out on uh, reach out to me on Facebook, reach out to me on Instagram, Momentum underscore Productions on Instagram, Momentum uh, Productions Filmmaking Academy on, on, uh, on Facebook. I got to change that long name. But keep reaching out to me. Ask me questions. If I don't get back to you, keep asking me. Don't stop. Keep persisting. All right. And I'll reply to you. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. And stay tuned for tomorrow's video because it's a big one. All right, guys, peace.